So, so you might find the general verse where Allah says, on the day that the father will flee from his son and the mother, she will not know her children. This is restricted by the verse in Surah Al-Zukhruf. Allah says there'll be this fraternal relationship amongst the people of Taqwa. Ask Allah to make us. Yes, ya akhi. They said marijuana is worse than alcohol because at maybe the type of marijuana they had in his city, that scholar, he said that it makes people do things crazier than when they drink alcohol. It's we an opinion. Especially if they smoke like dips, you know, like where they dip it in formaldehyde. I remember when I was in high school, people used to smoke marijuana and they would dip it, in, they would dip the joint in formaldehyde. So I used to tell them, brother, that's for dead brains, right? Formaldehyde pre pre preserves dead body parts. You're putting that in your body. So my friend Dilok, who was a Muslim, who was a Muslim, right? He smoked a marijuana cigarette that was dipped in LSD and stabbed himself to death. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead, man. He's, dead. he's one of the people who talked to me about Islam. Yes, Akhi. I can't hear you, brother. Wale. I'm sorry. Ya inni khafullah. No, you can say the equivalent of that. Yeah, yeah. I said that actually earlier. He's saying, you know, the hadith of the man that was approached by the woman, he said, Inni akhafullah. I fear Allah. So he's asking me, do you have to actually say, Inni akhafullah? He said, no, I mean, any verbiage that will get the job done, even get away from me if I, you know, call the police, right? <laughs> Anything that'll work, right? Because it's quite possible that, as, as, as Qadi Iyad mentioned, that was his, his niya talking. Not his tongue. And that also applies to a woman. If somebody tries to get her to do something wrong, she says, I fear Allah. Inshallah, she'll be from, from those people. Do we have any questions upstairs? Yeah, we have a few. All right, let's, let's listen. Uh, the first one was, if a group of women wanted to pray Jamaat together with just the women, is either the Adhan or the Iqama permissible? They can make the Adhan and the Iqama as long as there's no strange men around. Okay. And then the second question was, if somebody is a vegetarian because they find eating of meat disgusting, but they understand and acknowledge that uh, Allah has made it permissible, is that okay? Yeah, but that's fine. Is, yeah. And then the last veg, question... Veg, what do they call it? Vegan, vegan diet? Vegan diet, right? Yeah. But, but the protein shake says it's not good, right? <laughs> protein shake says he, sister's not getting past protein shake. That's my trainer, man. I, you know, I left Maliki school. I'm a Ray Han, Jalali school now, right? But, but as long as they know that it's not haram, they don't assume that it's haram, they just don't like it out of a personal habit, there's nothing wrong with it, alhamdulillah. Okay. And the last question was, with all of the hadith and everything about how merciful Allah is, if somebody starts to think sometimes that, um, how is Allah going to throw me into Jahannam with all that mercy, uh, how do you think about that or, or make yourself have that fear to counterbalance against you gotta the read, mercy? You, you should, those, those people should read the hadith like in Riyadh al-Salihin about the hellfire about the people that will be put in the hellfire. Because you have to have the balance of fear and hope. I didn't have a time to talk about hope. But they're both like two wings on a bird. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah said fear and hope are like two wings on a bird. You can't have one or the other. So you have to be careful. That's why sometimes if you feel yourself that you're laxed, you have to be your own pharmacist, man. Go, go listen to the hereafter series of Anwar Awlaqi, man. Put yourself in check. If you feel that you're too down and depressed, listen to Siraj Wahaj, you know. Something that motivates you. Something that motivates you and, and make you feel, alhamdulillah, man, about being good, about being a Muslim and connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having hope in Allah. You have to medicate yourself sometimes. Right? You need supplements, akhi. Supplements for your iman. Seriously. Those are the supplements for your faith, right? Supplements for your faith. Come to the masjid, that's fine. Okay, 30, 30, 30 minutes a day, come to the masjid. That's your workout. But you need supplements. CDs, cassettes, recorders, listen to mashaykh. Things that are going to boost you up. Y'all laughing, man. <laughs> what is the Islamic ruling on brushing teeth during Ramadan after Fajr? No problem, just don't swallow anything. <laughs> also, if you read the Quran online, is that still counted as reading Quran? And don't laugh at anyone's questions. It's not, it's not good to laugh at people's questions, man. Right? People ask questions because they never ask you if you laugh at them. And this, this is that thing about being a community, man. You know, try to respect people. Also, if you read Quran online, is that still counted as reading Quran or... Is the physical book needed 
No, you can read online, there's no problem with that. And if you do that, do you have to have wudu? You don't have to have wudu, but it's recommended to have wudu. Recommend to have wudu. What are some good resources to use to recognize Allah through His attributes, good books, websites? Well, like the best series I saw is by Amr Khalid, it's in English on his website. Amr Khalid has a series on the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in English that was translated in English. Uh, MashaAllah, very, very nice, uh, very practical, very simple, alhamdulillah. Because sometimes you read books about the, the names and attributes of Allah, and those books are written for scholars. So what happens when you start to read those books, you get into all these theological debates and arguments. Common people don't want that, man. It's like one, one brother told me, he said, I need a theology that's going to protect me from Beyonce, brother. I don't, need, I don't know all that stuff. And he said, I don't, I don't know all that, that stuff, man. It's too much for me, brother. I don't have time for that. I got issues, right? I'm trying to deal with my issues. So Muslims need, need a theology that empowers them, empowers them. But the theology of differences and arguments, that's for the scholars, for the ulama, to level ilm. So that's why the scholars in Azhar, they say, Ya ulad, fariq bayna dars al aqidah wa gharz al aqidah. Dars aqidah means to study aqidah like engineering, like MIT. Gharz aqidah means that the aqidah flourishes and cultivated in the hearts of the person. So the master of the Muslims, do they, do they, do they need like dars aqidah at a basic level? Yes. But not at a deep level. As Al Ghazali, Imam Al Ghazali said, somebody who takes the common people into those difficult issues of creed is like someone who took a bunch of kids in huggies to swim in the Pacific Ocean and just left them. And he said, like someone who took awlad to the Nahar and just put them in the river and let them swim and they'll drown. And, and, and Imam Ibn al Jawzi, he said, Woe to the scholars who introduced to the masses these high level theological discussions. La, la, la. There was a brother in the East Coast, on the East Coast on death row, not the record company. And that brother was, di was, was, was sentenced to die the next day. I'dam. He was on death row. So one of the imams in the community, African-American brother, went to him to visit him. Said, Akhi, you have any problems? Anything going on in your life? Anything we can do for you? You're going to die tomorrow. You, know, you have debts, your wife, your children. What's going on? Anything we can do for you, brother? We're here for you. Ah. He said, ah, I got one question. Ah. He said, what's that question? He said, where's Allah? Where's Allah? Bro? You're going to die tomorrow, man. Yeah, you, 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 you have financial problems at your house. You're about where, where Allah is. So we, we have to be very careful that we don't import a theology of complexes into the community, which has happened. But we should import a theology that's going to empower you and help you and give you enough to go to paradise and be a, a, a good believer. The khid of the salaf, inshallah. Is smoking ha hookah haram? Isn't it true anything that harms your health is haram? Yes, it is. There's an axiom in Islamic law. MashaAllah, very good question. Anything that harms your health is considered forbidden. Except in extreme circumstances. And hookah doesn't follow under, those, fall under any of those extreme circumstances. So, I'm sorry to tell you, on behalf of the entire Republic of Santa Clara, California, that smoking hookah is forbidden. Right? Absolutely forbidden. Don't listen to this makru. Don't let shaitan come into this makru. It's not makru shaitan, it's haram. Because it's killing people. It's killing people, yeah. That's why, sorry, go ahead. They're talking about banning hookah in some places, man. No, not because they're anti Arab and stuff, not because they're anti Muslim. Look at the Muslims, man. They ban hookah. We say, hey, look at this. Look, look at this. They're, they're, they're not banning the masjid, but they ban hookah bar, alhamdulillah. <laughs> a protein bar ban hookah bar. So, so uh, our brothers and sisters who smoke hookah, man, I know it's a struggle. And most people, what they told me, young people who smoke hookah, I asked them, they said, actually, we just want to socialize, man. There's nowhere to hang out and talk and like, you know, you know, express ourselves. So, so yes, hookah is absolutely forbidden, inshallah. May Allah protect us. Yes, Akhi. Sure. Well, you know, exactly, it's, it's haram to sell cigarettes. According to the majority of scholars, it's haram to sell these things. It's haram to sell them, man. And then you got people like me, non-Muslim, I know you got non-Muslim relatives, man. They're going and buying beer and alcohol from Muslims. Yeah. And they're like, hey, I saw that ayatocracy above Abdullah's Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, that's why the hip-hop community, the hip-hop community in the late 80s, early 90s was very pro-Muslim. But now they call Muslims sellouts, man. Say, say the Muslims took over where the Koreans left off. Right? No offense to Koreans, but they said the Muslims came and took over all the liquor stores, and then they're trying to put the little Fatiha above, you know, the girl with a bikini on, holding a six-pack of beer. Brother, brother, American people don't like ostentationism. They don't like people who don't respect religion. That's something about American people. They don't like that. They see through that. 
Yeah. They see through that, so you gotta be cautious. Yes, Echi. What the, you, you possess is halal? No, no. Business. Your, business is, your business is halal? Well, first and foremost, brother, before he starts his business, he needs to come and talk to someone who knows. Say, look, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm trying to do. And really, the best, one of the best brothers I know is brother Mun'im Salam. I don't know if you guys know who Mun'im Salam is. He's with Amana Mutual. Amana Mutual. This brother is a pro, man. You call him, he's in uh, Seattle, Washington. Look on the website, Amana, Amana Mutual. He's got the background. He can tell you everything about the business that you're interested in. And then go forward. What happens is brothers start businesses and then after the fact come and ask questions. Which is also acceptable, but it's easier to start. So you contact someone like Amana Funds. These brothers also, there's a, this brother in the East Coast, Yusuf Talha de Lorenzo. He has the Muslim uh, New York Stock Exchange market thing. And these brothers, man, they're on another level. They're solid. They have the re religious training and they have also the, you know, they, they graduate from good university. Contacting those type of people and talking with them. Okay. Where? Upstairs, sorry. Yes, sister. Uh, yeah, sorry, there's a few questions. The first one, if you could clear up some confusion that uh, the Quran was revealed piecemeal and wasn't completed for a long time, but it says in the Quran that it, well, we have revealed the Quran in Laylas of Qadr. So could you elucidate that? How was it? All, was it all revealed all at once, or um, did it start then, or etc.? So the question, the question at hand, is that the Quran, Allah says, "Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul Qadr." We sent the Quran on the night of power, but then again, through the Quran, we see that Allah says to the Prophet, "Wa nazalna ilayk." We sent to you, O Muhammad. Someone can get them youngsters outside, man. You know, it will be good, inshallah. Let's make sure there's no mixing out there, man. So we're not making, you know, protein shake here, man. So the, that's not a protein shake, is it? Though? <laughs> a straight carb, empty carbs, right? <laughs> empty carbs, yeah, no baraka. So, <laughs> number one. So, Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. We sent the Quran here. Anzalna, anzala, af'ala. This is called af'ala in the Arabic language. But when Allah talks to the Prophet, says, Wa nazzalna ilayk, nazzala, fa'ala. So there's a difference between anzala and nazala. Anzala, where Allah says, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. This means we sent the whole Quran on the night of power. Anzala means the whole thing. If I said, ajlasak, it means I made you sit down. Every part of you. But, if, but when Allah says nazala, this word fa'ala means step by step, step by step, step by step. So the ulama said, as mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, that the Quran was sent on the night of power to what's called Bayt al izza or what's known in Surah Al-Turah as Bayt al-Ma'mur, which is a Kaaba, above the Kaaba, which the angels make tawaf. So the Quran was sent from Lawh Mahfuz to this Bayt al izza on the night of power. Then over 23 years, from that point onwards, the Quran was sent peace be by peace be to the Prophet. Sallallahu You guys understand that? Or shall I say it again? Sent on the night of power to what's called Bayt al izza the whole Quran. And that's the meaning of anzala. After that, Allah says to the Prophet, nazala. Nazala means step by step, step by step, step by step. Okay? So after it was sent to Baytul Izzah, for the next 23 years, it was sent to the Prophet wasallam, step by step. Got it? So in its entirety, to Baytul Izzah on the night of Qadr, from Lawh al Mahfud. The next 23 years until the end of the Prophet's life, wasallam, maybe three or four weeks before he died, Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Quran is sent stage by stage. Yes, sister. Okay, this is the last question. Huh? Who? Don't say Maliki. We're getting it down at McDonald's. Yeah. Big Mac. No Big Mac for me. Yeah, sorry. Big Mac protein bar. Yeah, sister. 